what I'm going to be talking, I think, complements a lot of things that have been uh, uh, mentioned before. I think by the, well, the panel, we had one of the amaz most amazing panels today, but we had as well from George to um, David Siegel and others that been touching the challenge we are facing right now when it comes to this. So I need just, I think it's here. Okay, great. So what I'm going to be talking is precisely about the fourth industrial revolution. I think you know a bit about myself. So. And I think this is particularly important for the challenge we have right now. So if you look at the fourth industrial revolution, it's a continuation for the last kind of 300 years. And right now, the challenge, and we touched some of these things a lot uh, in the morning, is how do we bridge all the innovation that we have in terms of um, both the technology disruption that we face right now into the areas of uh, the changes in society the changes in money, for instance, Thomas Power this morning mentioned a very important thing that is one of the reasons I start this book, is when you look at the world data at the moment, we have at least five corporations worldwide controlling most of our data and most of our operations as we speak. And this is not their fault. And the problem right now is that these organizations build enough technology power, enough data power to create solutions that are critical for our daily lives. The challenge is that this was done on the side of most of the world economy. And we've been having a lot of discussions about centralization, decentralization, the panel touched a lot of that. So there's nothing completely decentralized and there's nothing completely central centralized. So the two things working together. But when you look at the present fourth industrial revolution, the challenge is that especially the technologies of artificial intelligence, Blockchain, and with blockchain areas, I'm talking about the blockchain as a technology that brings smart contract technology, that brings distribution of data through distributed clouds, and a lot of decentralization of systems, and creating identity for the data. And then, of course, fintech, financial technologies, and IoT, which was mentioned as well. So how do you look right now from a pure, right now, international, global, landscape where we have at least five to ten corporations controlling 90% of our data to and as well having a kind of schizophrenic approach especially if you look at the, what has been happening in the last three years in terms of geopolitics and as well the emergence of deep fakes facial recognition use for a lot of different things and of course uh, all the area of fake news touching together and of course we still have if you look at the world economy the numbers are quite astonishing. And this touches a lot of the things in the terms of fourth industrial revolution. So the world economy is around $100 trillion, okay? But the world debt, there's not completely amounts of how much it is, but we're talking about between $250 trillion to $300 trillion. So from a financial standpoint, as we start digitizing all the money, which at the moment is around 90%, but we have a paradox. Most of the economy is only 20% digitized. And most of the countries, they're more developed because the average worldwide is around 15% of digitization. So we have a big challenge of digitizing economy, digitizing society, and then at the same time, empowering people with these technologies, which is the biggest challenge that we face nowadays. So how can we do this? And as well, in a time that with artificial intelligence, we are starting to take things to the next level that we have almost three kinds of operations. Operations of humans to humans, humans to machines, which is most of happening with us day to day. If you look at the day, average data spending nowadays is around almost seven hours per day in front of devices, which is more than probably talk with our partners, our children and so forth. And we are just in the beginning. So, humans to humans, humans to machines, and machines to machines, which is the increasing new era, especially when we talk about data processment, Internet of Things, and a lot of other things. So, the challenge right now, how we take these technologies to empower society and to look at all the different areas that we have when you look at our daily lives, from personal, private use of data or and information to public to psychological because for instance the Brexit and the, the Trump phenomenon was partly using psychometrics manipulation and social media. So can we use blockchain technology to create identity for data 
to create protection for the data, even with all the challenges that George Sebastião mentioned in terms of cybersecurity, and as well, especially when you start putting the healthcare systems digital, the challenges that come out of that are the biggest shift in the history of mankind. And that is not just about singularity. It's about manipulation. That's what Arari mentioned in his books about the homo deus that is creating superhumans, which is at the moment possible to do. And of course, this has a lot of effects in terms of wellness, in terms of governmental, especially areas, and military. Because if you look at military powers, at the moment we have the biggest challenge when it comes to how do you take these technologies that partly are, if you look at the FBI data, is actually partly hosted, not partly, most of it hosted in the Amazon service. And then you have the geopolitical powers and all these things. Can you do an artificial intelligence that is in silos and put it in different boxes? Or can we actually create this in a way that there's a global regulatory part for this and you can actually create identity for the data that we control as citizens? That's the biggest challenge that we have. And of course, I'm not even talking about the billions of devices and sensors that we have at the moment around the world managing all our data. So I think the challenge right now, as we stay in this bridge between uh, the present stage of the fourth industrial revolution that we move to the next level, is how are we going to be doing this? Are we going to be doing this, digitizing the entire money in the world and creating a meta currency like a Libra or something like that? For instance, if Libra became officially a coin and it can be used, you'll become the biggest central bank in the planet immediately. Because Facebook owns data of 2.2 .2 billion people, which makes it the biggest organization in the planet. So that means the power of Facebook if the cryptocurrency at the moment there's a lot of discussion goes successful will probably become bigger than the US dollar or any other currencies in the planet that's why the regulators are panicking and I actually I agree that is not a simple task and as well who is going to bail Facebook if the ex experiment goes down or if Facebook has a problem of governance which in the end of the day Facebook board has 60% of the rights controlled by Mark Zuckerberg one single person so we have a lot of challenge here. It's not his fault, but we have a lot of challenge from a regulatory perspective, financial perspective, and technology perspective. But the challenge is that we move right now to quantum computing and to the, all the areas of acceleration of digitalization of society and data. And this is the biggest shift that we have right now, especially as we start touching the exponential growth and singularity parts. How are we going to manage this? And I think my thesis is that we need to work in a solution that comprehends an a balance between different technology tools that can solve solutions and bring identity of data to us as citizens, and at the same time empowers not making us subjudged by these technologies. And this is where it becomes, if we can use all this digitalization, for instance, David Siegel talked about the e-money systems. If we manage to create a global e-money system operation, then we're going to be able to transform and regulate a lot of this use, mar partly by technology, because the next five years are going machines by machines is the biggest shift that we have. But right now, how will you take this? And I'm finishing my presentation. I think probably to finish is, how are we going to make sure that this doesn't become the biggest tsunami in mankind? And it's something that we can actually surf and not be submersed. Because that's the biggest challenge, challenge that we have as technologists, entrepreneurs, citizens, and the people in different areas of academy, of, of government, and so forth. So thank you so much. And uh, more information is in the book and the, and, and the websites that we have online. Thank you.